On today's show, a new study shows that keeping a coal-fired power station costs more than it would to just install new wind and solar power farms. Deliveries of the Tesla Model 3 standard range get pushed back for an unknown reason in the US. And winter testing of the Porsche Taycan shows that it won't have regenerative braking on throttle liftoff. These stories and more coming next. This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company. We are 100% Kiwi and 50% community owned. Switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Welcome back to another Roundup show covering everything that's new and cool in the world of clean cars and clean energy. I'm Nikki and I've got some great stories to share today. Thanks for joining me. The US has now officially entered the so-called coal cost crossover, a point where it costs more to keep coal-fired power stations running than it would to just build renewable generation solutions. So says Energy Innovation, an organization devoted to accelerating progress in clean energy through smart policies. It's just released a report detailing how coal plants can be replaced by local renewables for less than it costs to keep those plants running without any drop in power output. Doing so would make the electricity grid cleaner, but it won't make the current US president happy as he's a known coal fan. In just two days' time, the US federal tax credits for Chevrolet plug-in cars will fall from $7,500 to $3,750, just as it did back in January for Teslas. That's because Chevy has passed its 200,000th plug-in sale at the end of last year. Unlike Tesla, however, which dropped the price of its new cars to compensate for the falling federal tax credit, GM says it won't be dropping the sticker price of its cars, meaning anyone who buys a new Bolt EV after April 1st will effectively pay more. One month ago, Tesla announced Model 3 standard range, the headline-grabbing $35,000 variant of Model 3, would finally enter into production. Lots of people placed orders after this, but this week, those who were expecting deliveries of their new car to start this week are reporting that Tesla is pushing back their car's delivery date by as much as six or eight weeks. There's no explanation of this pushback, but it's thought that it may have something to do with Tesla focusing on getting higher spec models out before its federal tax credit drops to $1,875. Earlier this week, a rumor surfaced that the smart car's brand future might be in jeopardy as part of cost-cussing measures at Daimler. The smart car never made it any money. That was quickly crushed, however, at the end of the week when Daimler announced that it had signed an agreement with Geely to form a 50-50 owned joint venture to own, operate and further develop the smart brand. It's not clear what smart will become, but it's likely, as I noted midweek in a video, that we'll see it continue as an electric vehicle brand with some Chinese market influences. If electric car adoption rates are to continue to rise, automakers and dealerships need to engage in more buyer awareness and education. That's according to Encore Digital Media, which partnered with Savanta to survey 2,000 UK drivers on their opinions of electric cars. Four out of 10 could name a Tesla, with BMW named as an electric car brand by just 18% of respondents. The survey also found a very large gap in knowledge concerning electric car charging infrastructure and range capabilities. It found out that those under 24 were most likely to want to buy an EV. The People's Republic of China has begun to scale back its electric car subsidies with the goal of having zero electric car incentives in the country by next year. It says this is to encourage local manufacturers to rely on innovation rather than government assistance, stating that it believes automakers have become overly reliant on government money to produce electric vehicles. It's called on local governments to also reduce their own incentives for electric car programs, forcing automakers to innovate in order to meet China's tough emissions and EV goals. Prove yourselves. That's the message from Tesla CEO Elon Musk in an email sent to all Tesla retail employees this week. Designed to assuage fears over Tesla's 
previous announcements that it was going to close its stores. Musk said that stores with a high visitation rate that lead to significant sales will, quote, absolutely not be closed down. Stores that have low visitation rates will be closed down and those in the middle will, well, need to prove themselves to avoid being shut. Musk also said ordering online meant customers could order in stores on their phones, which is very different to how it was originally interpreted. BMW has released short videos of its prototype iX3, i4 and iNext electric cars undergoing winter testing as part of its continued push towards electrifying its future fleet. The videos, which I incorrectly identified as being shot north of the Arctic Circle earlier this week, sorry, show each car driving at speed on ice-covered lakes and are meant to highlight the thorough testing BMW is putting each car's power electronics and suspension systems through in frigid temperatures. Before it's even begun, final stages of prototyping, Tesla appears to have made a price increase across the board for the just revealed Tesla Model Y crossover. While those who have already put a deposit down for Model Y see the original quoted price when they check, Tesla's website has now increased the price of the long range, long range all wheel drive and performance models by $1,000 each. Musk's response to the change, quote, Every car company is constantly changing prices, but nobody cares. That may be true, but Tesla set itself up to be different to everybody else. As it prepares its Taycan for production, Porsche has been busy putting it through winter testing. And while that might not be super exciting, it's revealed something that we didn't previously know, that the Taycan won't have single pedal driving or regenerative braking on accelerator liftoff. Instead, it'll just coast. That's according to CNET, which was one of the lucky few to be invited to experience the car firsthand. It says the production-ready cars required you to push the brake to slow, with Porsche executives stating that, quote, if the customer wants to brake, then he should hit the brake. And finally, you might not know about Harbour Air seaplanes if you're not from the Pacific Northwest, but they're actually North America's largest operator of commercial seaplanes. They also have a really cute otter mascot called Turbo, but I digress. This week, Harbour Air announced it would be working with electric aviation company Magnix to convert its entire seaplane fleet of HC2 de Havilland Beavers to fully electric operation. Test flights will begin in late 2019 and conversions will start shortly thereafter. I'm sure that's something that Turbo and every other otter can get behind. And on that note, I'm going to say goodbye. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Tell your friends about the show. And if you've got some feedback, send it our way. In the meantime, make sure you hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on a single episode. And while you're at it, why not switch to New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company? Get your home, your business and your car, if it plugs in, running on 100% zero emission electrons. Thanks for joining me. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Kakite. See you next time.